Well, the day has finally come. We put a lot of thought into it. I've emotionally prepared myself and uh, today on Aussie Arvos, we're fitting up a snorkel. All right, well, for emotional support here today, we've got the peanut gallery. Yeah, I've come along, I'm a shoulder to cry and I'm gonna hold the box of tissues when Dan pulls the whole saw out and I'm also gonna heckle him. Yeah, I feel like there's gonna be more heckling than yeah. support, but uh, yeah. I'm gonna make him question his decision to yeah, do this. after I've already done it. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of options got thrown around and a lot of comments got made. Um, we've spent a hell of a lot of time discussing this and thinking about it, so don't think it was a snap decision. One of the main things that got thrown around was the idea of whether we should go a guard entry or a bonnet entry snorkel. Now, I'm not a huge fan, this is a personal thing, nothing against anyone that's got them. Not a huge fan of a bonnet entry for this car. There's a couple of reasons. One, the car's clearly not built as a comp truck. I'm not doing crazy stuff with it. You know, it's built to be a sort of neat car, but a bit of a tourer, nothing crazy. If it was, you know, satin black with cut guards and 37s, bead locks, sure. I'd put twin four inch stainos on it, you know, whatever. There's another reason, and this is something I think is often overlooked. Now, there's people that do this properly, and there's people that don't. Now, when you cut a guard, there's people that'll argue that, yeah, you do take a bit of the structure out of the guard, but the guard, it's not really doing much. This part of the bonnet where you run a bonnet entry in, if you look at that, you're cutting out this corner here. That is sort of your main structural, I guess, framework of the bonnet. So you've got a bonnet skin, which is then crimped on the edge over onto this, or folded over onto this basically tube that's been manufactured here or pressed. The hinge bolts right next to it. When you cut the snorkel in, you end up pretty much cutting right next to the hinge. To me, I dislike that idea because really, when you look at what's holding your bonnet on your car, you've got two hinges and when it's closed, a latch. Where they cut this out, you'll end up with a sort of a bit of a circled or a rounded edge there and you'll see it start to crack away in the bonnet skin. That's because the bonnet's flexing and you've taken away a heap of the structure. Now what some people will do is cut that out and then they'll infill or plate the, the actual tube, which braces it up a bit and it does make it better, but then you've got to paint the bonnet anyway. So it's a lot more work and like I said at the start, not particularly suiting the way I want to go with this car. So then we leave ourselves with a guard entry. Now there's lots of types of guard entry and if you watched uh, Lamb's install with Jeff Fab on his GQ, you'll see they did a pretty cool custom short entry Stano. Now that's really neat, I like it, but again, different style car, not really what I was going for with this thing. So you've got a long entry stainless, you can run right down the guard. Again, Stano thing I feel really doesn't suit what I want to do with this car and a long entry this is gonna upset a few people, but it kind of looks like a bit of storm water pipe. There's just a bit too much tube going on. The reason I do want to enter here is because I've got my airbox mounted in this corner of the bonnet, and I want to reserve that space back there. It's currently got the gas converter in it, but I want to keep that space free to run a compressor or something like that in there. There's a fair bit of space there that gets taken up by your air filter, and I find it tucks quite neatly into this corner. So, that leaves us with our final decision, and what have we decided to run on the car? So, this is what we've decided to run. This is a brand spanking new Safari V-Spec that we got from the guys at OCAM. And uh, yeah, this is the path we've decided to go down with the snorkel on this thing. There's a couple of reasons. The old Safari ones are much smaller. You'll probably see them getting around a fair bit. They're sort of definitely old school. They are still making them. These ones are way bigger. In my opinion, they fit the guard a lot nicer. They look a lot nicer, but the main part is hell of a lot more airflow than the old school ones. So this should keep up with the airflow of any three inch stainer or anything like that. Shouldn't have any dramas. So yeah, let's uh, get started on this thing. Oh my God, that is a very scary. <laughs> it's funny cause I'm worried about scratching it. I'm about to drill a don't hole. Don't let it walk. No, like, don't start. Well, listen, listen. That's the other thing too, actually. It's not just a guard. You also have to drill holes oh. into the pillar as well. Right, you. Just don't remind me, all right? Dan's handling this whole situation pretty well. To be I'm honestly not that fussed about it. Like, <laughs> I'm, you know. I'm, well, I actually saw an ad. I um, want to do it properly. But I actually saw an ad on Marketplace the other day. Someone had a red GQ. No, no, like, no word of a lie. Leaf, like leaf, this. Leaf. I don't think it was. Yeah, leaf. There's I, two of them in the ad on the picture. Nah, no, right no, 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 it was like a new, someone was like, oh, I've got a red guard, do you want to swap it for one with a hole? No, don't tell me, <laughs> who's about to cut a hole in it? Well, so we're going to wherever that is. I've looked, I've looked, I've trawled Marketplace for a guard, this red, without peeling paint, mm. for two years, it I reckon, exist, since I, I bought the car. They're just not there. So mm. then you got the other argument of, do I buy a guard and paint it? You're gonna do that. You may as well just drill a hole in this one. And, and if you, you ever want, want to take the snorkel off, yeah, exactly, just yeah. patch it and paint Buy it. Buy a new guard, yeah. That's we'll the other thing about bonnet entries. I'm, I'm not a panel beater, but 
I know enough. Ask any panel waiter, would they rather patch a hole in a guard here where it's a single skin of metal with a bend in it? I mean, there's a bit of work in that. Or the edge of a bonnet where you've got a folded lip, two skins and a piece of tube inside. Like that's way, way more work than this is. All right, now you'll never catch me doing this again, but seeing as there's only one shot to do this, I am going to read instructions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at the pictures anyway. They put pictures in here, so we're, we're sweet. They, they accounted yeah, for the Yeah, because they know GQ is only have half a rate anyway, yeah, so yeah. they better put the pictures in. Yeah, I wonder if there's a connect the dots in this. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> Remove the flare in accordance with workshop manual. Yes, I read that. Now we're gonna heat gun the, I have to take the patrol badge off. Oh no. Which, That's yeah. like the only thing that makes this car, sorry, not the only thing. Oh, <laughs> my, car doesn't have, my car's never had badges and I've always envied badges and well, now you're gonna remove one. Keep my eye on him, I reckon that one mm. might try and walk. This one might go, oh, I think I could put this on my driver's side. We oh. have one each. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> have one each. Um, so we're gonna heat gun that and take it off. Now being that I just put a new iTech 2000 watt inverter in the car last weekend, to go with the battery setup, if you've watched that video. Uh, I decided I'm gonna run the 2000 watt heat gun off the car. The heat, heat. powering its own Yeah, it'll be, yeah exactly, yeah. literally. <laughs> it wants Feeling it. Feeling its own <laughs> Like the paint underneath is gonna be much redder than everywhere <laughs> or, else. Or the worst, the paint's gonna come with it. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you don't have a heat gun, you could probably use a hairdryer for this. That's getting pretty warm. Nice. That was a pretty smooth removal. Yeah. Mm. Now you got to clean all that up. Yeah, it's lovely. 1989 Japanese tape. It's held mm. on pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> Look at like, um, even the price of these things. Like I, got, I found the receipt for this thing. In 1989, it was 42 grand. Mm. When like, yeah. uh, you know, pretty high spec Commodore was like 18, 19. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they're luxury like cars. Yeah, 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 that was like a, like a third of a house. Well, it was like rare to have a four wheel drive. Yeah, that's it. That's, there's actually a lot going on in it. Whereas, yeah. you know, now, everybody, person that's ever had to pick up a pot plant from Bunnings has got a dual cab ute. Yeah. I, I told myself I wouldn't do this, but I'm just quickly polishing the section where the where the badge was. To that, that mind you, you won't see when the snorkel's on. You'll up, see mate. that bit of it. <laughs> Dan will see it in his mind. In my mind, it'll still be there. So we're just going to give this a quick little... There's going to be like a, a lighter coloured bit of paint that says patrol. Under the snorkel, Liam. It's going to be under the snorkel. Nine o'clock last night, I was out there washing the car before we filmed today. Just so you know. I was going to say, it does look quite clean. There was dust on it and I was like, oh no. <laughs> can't have that. Can't film with dust on it. People will think it like lives, you know, People will think in a shed disrespect on a dirt it. road. People might think it's a four wheel drive or something. I know, yeah. horrible. <laughs> no, 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 can't have that. There, now I've perfectly polished this guard and now it's ready to have a hole in it. <laughs> so anything that, with these snorkels is the amount of holes you have to drill. At least with a stainless, all right, it's an oblong hole, but it's one one hole. Whereas this, you get all these little... Nah. Have, I, have, have, I, have you I made you regret? The, yeah, nah, if I take it off, I'll just put those bullet hole stickers there, you know the... Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, speed holes. Speed <laughs> holes. You make the car go faster. See, everyone's on camera, he's taping that end. So if the hole doesn't line up... It's my fault. Imagine if they put the wrong template box. Oh. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> Are these hollow right the way through, or is there actually like a, a some nah, sort of tube inside that? Hollow. It's just whole thing's yeah, hollow, yeah. yeah. It's um, enough flow for a turbo TB. Oh, it's enough flow for a turbo TD. No, That's no, they need, twin, they need twin four inch nah, stainless. Four inch is so overkill. Ask the kids on Instagram. Right, template is templated. Alright, you know what comes next. I oh, know, that's why I'm taking a long pause. Do you take Any further haggling you'd like to do before we uh, begin the next process? Are you sure you, you want to go through with this, Dan? Yeah. No, I think it's worth it. I've had two years to prepare for this. Yeah. You, got, you got nothing. I think the, I think the, the pros of not um, the pros killing your are, engine definitely outweighs the con of a... The con is... Well, the, the pros are I get colder air intake. Mm, that is true. Definitely more horsepower. We know this. Only if you got the ram facing backwards, of course. Uh, it looks good. Mm. The cons are, I have to drill a hole in the guard and half the people in the comment section are gonna hate me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are the cons. Yeah. Oh, oh my <laughs> god! That actually sounded like it hurt the guard. Dan's oh. handling this way better than what I thought. I, thought I told you, I've had a really long time to get ready for this. So this is not the most expensive thing I've ever drilled a hole in. I was talking to Shieldsy about it, so I got the hole saw off. 
And I'm like, oh, you know, all this shit. He's like, you try doing it to a brand new 200 series. You're worried about a GQ. I'm yeah, like, that's a good one. Fair point. enough. <laughs> yeah, you can get another 200 series. Can't get yeah, another one. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. yeah. All right, you ready? No. I'm going straight through. And just make sure you use soft hands. Oh, so I suppose you're drilling it anyway. You don't want to keep, do one of those where they keep going through and they nudge the guard with the fucking, with the end of the, just the chuck. You're more worried than I am. Yeah. Well, well yeah, now it's done. It's ruined now. It's done, it's ruined. <laughs> yeah, it's actually ruined. If you've just arrived, um, the car's worthless now, pretty much. <laughs> These are actually, I see people list these no, for no, like $500. No. And especially one that's, I mean, you know how hard it was to find a red one. You probably could have sold it for like 500 bucks. And mm -hmm. now it's worthless. Yeah, I can live with that. I'm drilling slow so you burn. The slower you drill, you essentially don't burn all the paint around the hole. The thing that's annoying about a snorkel is that it can't be reverted. Sure. And it can only ever suit that type of snorkel. Anything can be undone with enough money thrown at it. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say anything. Most things. On a car, anyway. It's like, the four-wheel drive world is weird like that. Like, you go, I'm going to drill a hole, and everyone goes, oh, it's irreversible. And like, then you That's go to, Patrick like, does. the old school, like, classic car scene. Whole guards rusted out, whole seals rusted out, pillars rusted out. Mm. The whole, half the car's cooked. Mm. People throw 100k at it to fix it. Yeah. You can rebuild anything out of sheet metal. Mm. Well some very skillful people can. It just yeah. costs a lot of money. They are quite thick guards, aren't they? Very, mm. yeah. Paddy was saying before, like, do we cut it with tin snips or... I don't think you could. I don't mean to sound like a typical GQ owner going on about how, like, you know, they're the strongest thing in the world, but they are very thick guards. It's the car you can lean on and it doesn't go dunk. You lean <laughs> on a modern car and they go bonk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's also why they weigh so much. Yeah, exactly. They have it's so funny. Them. You look at the like curb weight of a GQ unmodified, and you're like, "How are you so yeah, heavy?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's... If they could have just taken half a mil off the thickness of all the thing of all the steel in the car and dropped the weight by like 300 kilos, that used to be a thing, you know. It's all like hush hush and rumor mill stuff, but I'm pretty sure they actually did it back in the Bathurst days. I think it was one of the Ford teams. They used to acid bath the guards, so they'd essentially make the whole guard like half a mil thinner, and they'd pull weight out of the car. Oh. So they pull the panels off, put the whole thing in like acid and leave it for like a couple of days. <laughs> really? Take it out and wash it. And the whole thing, you imagine, you even, deteriorated evenly so. gets thinner. Magic. I feel like the hole being bigger definitely makes you feel worse about it. Oh yeah, the bigger the hole. Well, it's harder to patch. Seven 10 mil holes. That's all the easy ones done. Mm. Now for the big one. Oh. Yeah. That was it. I oh. hate it. Look at that. Ruined. Look at that. That might not have even been in the right spot. <laughs> nah, it's in the right spot. That's like nails down a blackboard that, but instead of a blackboard, it's a red guard. Oh, I oh, mean, that's it's through. That's the, oh, yeah. like, that's the worst it's ever going to look. Don't say that. Someone in the comment section right now is crying. <laughs> I know, I'm starting, I'm not to, crying. I'm starting You're to understand crying. <laughs> how Whistle and Diesel feels. <laughs> What's the tool for the job? Grinder. No, I've actually, yeah. I have acquired from Schulte who gave me the whole saw. A air hacksaw. Oh, air hacksaw. Just as I get to the easy part where it actually yeah. wants to drill properly, <laughs> I have to stop. <laughs> I was going to say, yes, we have ruined a guard, but I don't think I've any, ever seen anyone ruin a guard with such care. So, yeah, I don't think I could wreck cars for a living there. Hey, oh. There it is. Lines up pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was, a, that was probably one of the nicest bits of paint on the car, too. That oh. yeah, not a single scratch on that piece. I think you've been, uh, the last like week when you go to bed, you've been running over the procedure in your head yeah, as you yeah. fall asleep. Yeah, pretty and, much. And then waking up in, the, in, a, in a sweat when in your dream, the, the drill bit walks over the guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. With the scary part sort of done, I've drilled the holes. 
Liam has admitted that uh, it was too anticlimactic for him and now he's running away. Yeah, I'm gonna go flog my patrol instead. Yeah. <laughs> I've sat the airbox in, which is a patrol doctor stainless, like a GU style airbox. And it doesn't, this doesn't line up perfectly with the, with the hole or the mounting fixture where it would cut the hole. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna mark it out based on sort of the medium between the airbox and the snorkel. And then I'm gonna trim this back, remove that, which will give me a bit of wiggle room in the silicone can join up and also give me a three and a half inch instead of a three inch inlet so because the air box is three and a half inch um, once we cut that back we'll pretty much be able to go straight through the garden so moment of truth we've got the studs all in the snorkel and the holes are all drilled I've peeled off all the tape now what we're going to do is test fit this up see how everything lines up and then we're going to drill the holes in the pillar and ruined so now we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna do a bit of touch up paint around all the holes. I do have color matched red, in case you're wondering. And uh, we're gonna let that dry overnight so as it all doesn't scrape off as soon as I go and put bolts in it. And tomorrow morning we'll catch ya and we'll bolt this thing back on. All right, so we've let the paint dry overnight. Everything's all sweet there, so there's no bare metal, nothing to rust, which is important. The first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna put the two little plastic inserts that come with the snorkel. In the manual, it does say to drill three holes, but I think two is gonna be fine, and I figure the less holes in the pillar, the better. So put two little plastic inserts in there. I'm gonna silicon them in just to seal everything, and then we're gonna go ahead and put the snorkel on. So that's a little antenna back in the car. We're gonna test that that works because uh, probably about the fanciest feature this GQ has. So with everything plumbed up, the inner guard and the flares all back on and the mud flap, we're good to uh, close the bonnet on the old girl and uh, head on to the next big step, which is of course, fitting the ram head. Now, if you spend too much time on the internet, you'll probably think we might put it on something like, like this, but I'm like, like to think I'm not crazy, so I'm gonna do that. We'll uh, put a hose clamp on that and we are good to get this thing back out of the shed. What do you think, Dan, was the right choice? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I'm stoked for that. <laughs> so, with the ram head on the car and done up, we're obviously back out of the shed and I am absolutely stoked with how this thing has come up. I mean, the main part, the main thing that you really notice with this is just how well it follows the body lines. Like from the front, it follows the guard up perfectly. It also follows the wheel arch really nicely. It even matches in with the angle of the side of the cab. Like, absolutely stoked with that. And also the finish, like it matches the Dominator paint on the bar and the, uh, on the rock sliders. Also planning on doing that on the flares at some point. So it all blends in really well. And it keeps with the look I'm going for for the car, which is really just black, red, and obviously chrome wheels. And uh, yeah, definitely no regrets on drilling a hole in the guard. <laughs> now, that just about wraps up installing the snorkel, but what have we got coming next? Well, you may have noticed there is no roof rack on the car. We got something coming in that department. I'm not gonna say what, but uh, you'll have to stay tuned. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.